Hey, lovely girls. These are my new goats. They're beautiful. I want to introduce you to them, tell you about them. Hey, Ben, which one's your favorite new goat? I like the one that has like the black right there and the black right across its eyes. That is, that is Dot. She's the one I milked last night. Last night, Benjamin showed his grit as a true farm kid. Thank you, darling. I brought the goat's milk in. It's just one dough in milk, and um, it was only like a quart. And I brought it in and I strained it, and he said, can I drink some of that? And I was like, well, we're gonna put it in the freezer, cool it off, and we'll stick it in the fridge. You can have it for breakfast in the morning. He's like, oh no, I want it warm. And so I just poured some warm, fresh out the goat milk into a mug, and this kid sat down and drank the whole thing and was, enjoying every bit of it and I was like that is a farm boy right there. <laughs> One of the things I have got to do to this week is get our milking stall like completely cleaned out and reset. It's just really dusty in there. It hasn't been used uh, really to speak of this year. I milked Mabel a little bit but I didn't she had Fred on her and so I did not milk her daily. So I kind of debated how fully to tell the story of these goats. And I decided last night that I was gonna tell the whole thing to you guys. Um, I wasn't sure beforehand if that was the best thing to do, but I realized last night that it might be an opportunity for blessing for this family. Um, so I picked up this, these four Nubians. We keep dairy goats. About a week ago, Maya, bless him, sweet Maya, looked at me and said, hey, I, w I want you to buy more Nubians. See if you can find some more Nubians. Never, that has never happened before. He's never been like, hey, voluntarily buy more animals. That usually I am the driving force behind that and we actually have an agreement that I will no longer bring home animals without us being, having agreed upon it beforehand. And as I said, when I told you about this, I didn't make him say it twice. I was like, oh yeah, okay, totally. And like five minutes later, I'm like scrolling the internet looking for goats for sale. Now, finding really good goats can be a challenge. Whenever I get asked by people, how do you find good, any good animals? You need to be prepared to wait for the right thing if you don't want to get a project animal, if you don't want to get something that might need some TLC. Uh, finding really good animals is it's difficult because when people go to downsize a herd or a flock or whatever it is that they're getting rid of, they don't get rid of their best ones. They get rid of their, their coals. They get rid of the ones that they don't want to breed those characteristics into the rest of their animals. Hey Ben, let's go take the food out of the oven. Now, that's not to say people don't get rid of good animals, but usually if you're gonna buy like a really, really nice, like good breed standard, good milk lines, all of that stuff, you're gonna have to pay a lot for it because that those are sold from people who have, you know, multiple of those good animals because they have a good breeding program. <sighs> the exception and what, where you can find like really great animals is whenever you can find a herd sellout, which is where somebody is like selling their entire herd for whatever reason. Maybe they're, oh, we're gonna get a cow, or uh, we decided to switch breeds and start breeding a different breed, or whatever the situation may be. Maybe they're moving. So that is what I was looking for. I was thinking, okay, we wanna get a few new goats. Um, and so ideally, what I would really like to find is somebody who's maybe selling their herd. I went on Facebook. Facebook, I guess you maybe aren't supposed to sell animals on there anymore, but it does happen. There are farm groups that you can find animals for rehoming and then you just kind of make the deal and talk about the logistics and all of that off of Facebook. Um, and I immediately went to those places and I came across a post for a herd sellout of Nubians totally not something you see regularly. I look at these goat pages all the time even though like I don't usually get the things that I see because you know we weren't in a place that we were really wanting to buy more goats but a lot of times I don't see anything. Like I look at this stuff all the time. I see this herd sale out. It was posted just like eight hours before so I sent her a message and said hey I'm really interested. I'd love to hear more about your goats. They looked good from the pictures but of course I didn't really know much about them and she messaged me back and was like 
I'm fangirling, I can't believe this, you know, like I love your channel. And that was really cool, obviously, but I really didn't know what was going on at that point um, and how much my heart was gonna get moved by this family and what a blessing these goats were gonna be to me and how much this situation would be a blessing to them. So upon connecting on Facebook and chatting with the owner of these goats, I learned that this family who have three young children and live about an hour away from me here in central Arkansas, um, that they were doing the hobby farm thing, that they'd gotten into goats, that they'd grown a garden and all of that. Um, and that's how they came across our channel. But that this year, their daughter, who was two and a half at the time of being diagnosed, and is now, um, I guess, almost three, was, uh, she got sick and she was diagnosed with um, stage four uh, cancer, uh, bone marrow cancer. And it completely like turned their lives upside down, obviously. And I learned that right now, this mom, who had very lovingly put together this goat herd, is uh, staying in the hospital with her baby who's having treatment for cancer. And this dad is working his tail off and staying at home with her two other babies and um, milking goats every night at seven o'clock at night after he works long days. And they were looking to get rid of their herd because they couldn't keep it right now. They were saying that they wanted to just completely simplify and focus on having as much family time as possible. And that right now in this stage, goats were not the right fit for them. Not sure yet. I think I have an idea for a name for her. Joe. Joe, you like that name? Is, this a, is that a girl? Mm hmm. Um, Joe can be a girl name, like Joe March from Little Women. So, yesterday, after talking extensively with Crystal, um, this mom who is in the hospital with Juniper, their little girl, I, uh, we drove out and picked the goats up. And as soon as I saw them, I knew that I had just gotten an incredible uh, group of goats. They're just absolutely beautiful. They're everything a Nubian is supposed to be. Perfect long ears and rounded noses. One of them was in milk, which I didn't even realize whenever I got that. I, I put on a vlog the other day that I really had hoped to get a doe in milk, but I didn't think that I was gonna be able to get one. And so that was just like a really cool bonus. So I got to come home last night and milk uh, for the first time in a little while, and it was just really cool. They've all been milked, they're all stand trained. I mean, just I, I just had not even hoped that I would find goats this good. But the really cool thing about it to me is that because I was the one who answered the ad and because I was the one who got the goats, um, now this family that because of circumstances had to give up their goats that they couldn't have in this stage of life, they'll still get to see them uh, because they're viewers of our channel. And so to Crystal and Stoney, thank you so tremendously much. And you are definitely 100% in my prayers and will continue to be so. And for all of uh, my viewers, I'm gonna put their information down below. Um, after reading extensively last night when I got home about their story and following the, like the Facebook that they've put together to share with people what is going on with Juniper and also I'm going to put their GoFundMe that was started for them uh, down below as well and my hope is that the fact that it was me that answered the ad could be even more of a blessing beyond being able to see the goats that they had to get rid of because of the circumstance but that because of the reach that I have that it might be a greater blessing as well so I would appreciate if you guys would pray for them and check out that information and, and um, yeah and I told Crystal that when Juniper is done with her treatment and well and recovering um, that I would love for her to get to come and uh, and see our farm and and come and get to meet her in person um, and that is absolutely going to be my prayer so now that we're all crying <laughs> I would like to introduce you to our new goats um, 
really cool. The papers, uh, two of them are registered and uh, they're from a line, a breeder here in Arkansas called Hoyt Farms is where they came from originally. Miriam, who is my beautiful best milker, Nubian, is actually from Hoyt Farms lines as well. And these girls actually kind of look like her, which was a really cool little thing because Miriam was my first Nubian and one of my most dear, my most dear goats. Um, I've had her for five years. And so it was really cool to get to have more of the bloodlines of her that I love so much in my herd. The family that we got the goats from, two of them are registered with names on their papers. Uh, she said we could call them whatever we want because um, they just called them all nanny. So we're, uh, we, I've been playing around with, I love naming things, I've been playing around with naming them. And so we haven't quite 100% nailed it down yet, but I'll tell you what I'm kind of thinking of for them. Also, before I put the close-up camera on them, um, it's normal for goat sides to look a little sunken in when they haven't been eating a lot of roughage. They have access to hay. They did not look like this yesterday. They're all very, very healthy, but they're freaked out. It's their first day in a new place. And so they're just now starting to browse and eat hay. I just, before anybody says they look really skinny, they're, it's, they're sunken in because they have not been eating on the hay today. They've just been scared and they'll acclimate and they'll look just as round bellied, uh, within the next two days as they did yesterday when I got them. So we've got four girls here and they're all, uh, they've all kitted before and they're all fairly young, like between two and three years, but they all have all kitted before and all been milked, which is really awesome. Um, here, Ben, you just love her, huh? Yeah. So right up here in the front is Dot and she's the one that's currently in milk. So I milked her last night. She did awesome. They told me that she gave them a little bit of a hard time, but their stanchion did not have a head stall. And the one she was used to had a head stall and we have one. So I put her on the stand and she did not give me a hard time at all. So she didn't stomp or anything? Nope, she didn't stomp or anything. She was really good. She the standard case. Yep, she was real well behaved. My first goat herd, <laughs> we did a deal with a local family and traded them labor for a herd of goats. And they were, almost all of them, were pregnant first fresheners. I never kidded before. So my introduction into goats was seven pregnant does that had never kidded before. And so my introduction to milking was breaking seven first fresheners. It was a nightmare. It was so much work. And some of my best milkers now were from that group, but, um, <laughs> To give four does that are already stand trained is literally like, are you serious? Pinch me. These two in the back right here, I'm pretty sure we're going to call this girl. I, ben likes Joe, but he's not sure because he thinks that might be a boy name. But I was telling him that Joe March is a fantastic, oh goodness. <laughs> that Joe March is a fantastic character in literature and so I convinced him that it is a girl name so we're not sure but I also love the name Maeve. Maeve. Like M-A-E-V-E. -E, Maeve. That's too hard to say for you. That's too hard to say for you. You like Joe better? Yeah. I, and I already call him Mama. You know the one that's the, the mom to um, Linda? Yeah. Um, I I call that one mama. Yeah, I know you call her mama. Because she she got two kids. Yeah. So right here, this black one, I'm thinking about calling her either Adele or I like that name, Adele. You like Adele? I want it to be on this goat. <laughs> you want it to be on that goat? You like Adele for that goat? I think yeah. she could be an Adele. Look, do you think she likes that? I also like the name Eliza. Oh yeah, that one Adele just calls Eliza. You like Eliza? You just here grabbing all the names for your goat, huh? Ben is like attached to her and she's a sweetie. She's been letting him love on her. Is that right, girly? He loves people. Yeah. And over here, um, she's been probably the least warm. I haven't really gotten to handle her a whole lot. But I was thinking about Beatrice for her. I really like the name Beatrice. Um, no, I don't want to lose my mug. You can drink some more of my tea. She's really, she's sweet and I have handled her some, but she's just not really sure. They're also really wary of bear 
and that's why he's not in the yard with me right now and he's like having total FOMO over there, fear of missing out. But they're, they're really wary of him, so I'm kind of trying to come out here and spend some time with them and let them warm up without having him with me. I really like them though. Uh, so I get a lot of questions about our goats, and especially during garden season, and especially during garden season this year when our goats hadn't been bred, and so I wasn't really doing as much with them. I didn't make as much content about them. But uh, the reason why we keep goats instead of a cow here is that we live on a ridge our ground is rock i mean it's so so rocky and growing grass has been difficult it's got had a lot of woods here and so when we first started here we did not have a single area bigger than just this small yard that would grow grass and so a cow was kind of out of the question we just didn't have the space for a cow and goats made more sense because we had woods and goats can thrive on brush that's where we started with goats and the other thing was that my children all had um, milk protein sensitivities and they couldn't drink cow's milk and they actually still don't drink a lot of cow's milk goat's milk just goes over better with people um, who can't drink cow's milk. And so all my children were able to drink goat's milk. We have cleaned out a field that could probably support a cow if we, especially if we really focused on trying to get it to grow grass. But we're not super motivated to get a cow at this property because we have goats and we like them. Look, here's Miriam, who is, you know, probably somewhat distant, but a relative of these girls. You can have the last one. I can have the last sip. You're so generous to save the last sip of my tea for me. Thank you, sweet angel. No, they're not having any qualms eating this. Yep, he's made good friends with one of them. What are your thoughts? I... Do you like them very much? Yeah, I like them. Hey, girly. Dad, look. Good job. I'm petting two. This, this is the one, but this isn't. <laughs> Which is this one? Then? That's Dot. <laughs> Regarding like all the goats that we have, why do we have so many? Because they're like Pringles. You don't need this many goats. Like if you're just trying to have milk for your family, you don't have to have this many. Uh, now we use the milk. I don't ever waste it. Uh, whenever we're getting goat's milk, even when we're getting a couple gallons of milk to a day, I make yogurt and cheese. We make fresh mozzarella a lot um, out of goat's milk and of course we drink it. I have six kids, you know, like five boys. They can drink a lot of milk. Like, and so it's not something that I, you know, I feel is excessive. Now, I also am not super intense on like breeding back to back. Like I don't breed every, my, each one of my goats every single year, like I do off years and kind of just stagger breedings. But I've got the Nubians, which I have now, um, seven of those and then we have the La Manchas which we have like five of those including the mixed ones and then I have a couple of other mixed breed goats and then I have my mean girls herd which is my Nigerian dwarves which I did milk this last year some but I really after milking big goats and getting as much milk as I did out of big goats I did not love milking Nigerian dwarves but my kids really like them, they're really cute. They don't eat very much and they don't cost very much to keep. So I don't have plans of getting rid of the Nigerian dwarves. I was asked that, well, am I gonna do this now? If I were really trying to keep my farm as efficient as possible, then I would not keep them. I, I wouldn't need them with the La Manchas and the Nubians that I have, but we have them more as pets than anything else. And so I am planning on breeding them. Right now, we milk by hand and uh, we do that in this barn right up here. This is, we have this goat barn and then we have a barn next door where the other female goats and the female alpacas sleep. This was made from a reclaimed privacy fence that we had and this is actually something that is on the list to be revamped or replaced. We did this entirely out of reclaimed materials. Truly like the only money we spent was for like nails and stuff and then eventually we replaced the gates and put nice gates on but there are a couple of trees right around here that have died and they need to be cut down. And it is gonna be really difficult to do that with this barn. So we're thinking about taking it down and rebuilding something that has a little bit better of a milking space, kind of a little bit further back away from the house. So those are our new girls. We're very, very thankful to have them. And like I said, I'm hopeful that in the midst of the start time that, that it could be a blessing um, as much as possible.
that it was me that clicked on that ad. I always hope to be able to be an avenue for blessing in, in the lives of those that I get to encounter. And so, again, the information will be in the, the description down below if you guys want to check this family out and love on them and bless them. And in the meantime, I'll be here and I'll show you guys footage of goats. I'm telling you, the spring, there is not there's not much cuter in the world than a newborn goat baby. Goat kids, when they're first born, they're something else. And we're gonna have quite a few of them in the spring. And I'm pretty excited about that. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and meeting my new girls. I bless you, until next time.